It was about in 2008 when an extracurricular teacher of mine asked the class to investigate something that they wouldn't usually get the chance to in their usual schooling career. And I decided, on a whim, to go down the road of game design. And it didn't take long to discover that I was completely hooked in it. And armed with this passion, I went online and tried to find other people who were interested in game design. And I found this guy who had just started up a team. He's based in America, and he was interested in graphics. So together, we sort of banded, and we made all sorts of games together. And that was the first natural step of this journey, learning about game design, learning about programming, learning about graphics. But it went on to other things, things like web design. And I learned a lot about the web and made web websites for all sorts of things. Up in the top right, you'll see a website that I made for uh, my robotics team. Now, the first thing I discovered was that we had a robotics team at school in the first place and that they were looking for a programmer. So I joined, started programming, and I've since become team captain, and we've been to the World Championships three times, having won one of them. Now, programming also has a really logical frame of mind, a really simple one. And along with this logical frame of mind, it sort of fit well into that of maths and of physics, so a love of that quickly developed as well. And along with all this came a really, really important realization, and that is contrary to popular belief, Computers aren't actually that difficult. And while this was all really good, there was one really big problem. And to put it simply, as a programmer, I was lonely. None of my friends knew how to program. None of my friends wanted to know how to program. And they didn't understand the passion that I had for it. Not even my developer friend in America wanted to learn how to program because he was solely interested in graphics. And through this frustration and loneliness, I realized that not only do we not have a core set of passionate developers in not just programming but in computers in general, but that those who aren't part of that set just aren't learning how to use computers at all. And a lot of you will say, well, that's quite a bold claim because we are the most connected generation of our time. People are always on their smartphone or their tablet on a social networking site at some point. They're always using computers. But connection does not necessarily mean that they understand how to use the computers. Because if we are digital natives, this buzzword that everyone is throwing around at the moment, then smartphones and tablets are the equivalents of shiny beads. And that comes to the first cause that I believe of this problem that we're facing. And that is that we have a very, very consumerist approach to technology. Smartphones and tablets designed to be consumer devices for accessing social networks, for gaming, for things like that. And their sales are skyrocketing. And when you look at the devices that were made for productivity, for developing desktops and laptops, their sales are plummeting, which shows that as a human race, we're perfectly OK with this. But when you think about it, we shouldn't really be OK with this, because we don't want to be consumers of technology. The second problem is that we have a lack of engagement in education pretty much all over the world in this area. Now, I believe this is for three reasons. One is that we don't offer this sort of education in enough places. Two is that when we do offer it, it's just not good enough. And the third is that there isn't enough of an uptake of students willing to participate in these subjects. The statistics speak for themselves. In New Zealand, engagement in IT has never gone over 3.6%, and it has only been declining since 2008. Um, and computer science and programming has never gone above 0.3%. And this is being seen all over the world. Since 2003, A-level IT engagement in the UK has dropped 60%. So this is being seen by everyone, and not much is being done to solve it. So it's obvious that the problem lies in education. So the solution must also lie in education. And in the long term, it would be great if formal education adopted this as well, and it would improve across the board. But that's not going to happen any time soon. When I started researching this a few months ago, I've been hearing so many stories of people that have also noticed this problem and have wanted to fill in the gap themselves through their own form of education. Stories of kids and adults alike starting up programming classes and trying to get everyone interested in it, and that is really encouraging. Something that has been started just here in Auckland a, a, about a month ago is the creation of this place called the Mind Lab. And 
This is a place where kids are encouraged to explore and learn, not just about programming, but in science and technology in general. And it's good to see that people are really interested in trying to fill these gaps in education. So I decided I wanted to do something about this problem myself. And I thought, I thought about it, and I thought, well, computers aren't that hard, but they seem hard to people. And I thought, what we've got to do is take that seem, seeming complexity, decode it into a human understandable language, so people can see it for its simplicity and its beauty. So that's why I started Decode a couple of months ago. And I'm not going to lie, it's very experimental. I thought about how we could teach people how to program, given that there'll be people of varying age levels, varying skill levels, and all wanting to go down a different direction on this really big area that they could go down. And the model of some person standing at the front of a classroom, just telling people what to do, doesn't work in this case, because people will either fall behind or lose interest really, really quickly. So I thought, how did I learn to program? How have most people learned how to program? And that's through the internet, teaching themselves. So if we bend that a little bit, and we take a group of people, and we give them the tools and the resources and the experts, they should theoretically be able to drive themselves down this road and actually start to develop and learn how to program. So at my own school, I decided to start after-school sessions for people to learn how to program. And at the beginning, yes, I did take more of a teacher role because we had a lot of beginners. I taught them the languages of the web. And we went on week by week, and people learned. And slowly but surely, people started going down their own roads. We had rising experts coming up, trying to teach other people how to program. We had different areas going down into places that I don't actually know a lot about, but they do, so it's great that they could develop it on their own. And collaboration started to form, and you could see that people were actually quite good at this and were interested in going down these areas, but they just hadn't had the means to do it before. And this has acted as an enabler to it. The, yes, the model still needs work, but here's a proof of concept. It does work, and that's why we just want to expand it. And that's really the physical manifestation of this project. And of course, like anything digital, we need to have a website. And our website is really important for a number of reasons. One, it acts as a center of learning resources for the, for the things that we've covered in Decode and more. Now, the really cool thing about, this web, about that part of the website is that not only have I been writing some learning material, we've actually got other people already writing material for it because they've become so interested in this project, and it's really good to see people getting enthusiastic. Now, the second and third features, which we're still developing at the moment, is that of an outlet for young programmers to get their work out into the real world and act as a motivator for people, because nothing is a greater motivator than actually seeing your work in the real world and doing real stuff. And the third feature is a sort of a network, a forum for young programmers to actually connect and develop and collaborate and learn together so we can tackle that form of loneliness because they'll be able to find like-minded young people, maybe even local to them. So that's the website, and it's of course being developed, and that's where we stand at this moment. It's a young project, there's still a far way to go, but we have come so far in this short amount of time. So here's where we want to go in the future. Now, the first really important step is that we are opening Saturday sessions up to everyone starting from the 9th of November. And this will be a way for anyone to come along, anyone to learn to programming, doesn't matter what school they're at, and actually follow our model. Um, following this, we'll be able to extract some really, really core people from us, really, really enthusiastic drivers, and that's the next thing we want. We want heaps of people to get on board and actually start driving this project, to start developing, to start teaching, to start doing all sorts of things, and especially take that project and put it in their own schools. Because my vision for Decode is that a lot of people will actually start doing it, and that its influence will be able to help a lot of people and help a lot of people start and learn how to program. And of course, the last and really important step is to keep developing the website, because there are a lot of features that it still needs. So that's where we stand, and that's where we want to go in the future. And if you can participate in this in some way, I implore you to do so, whether you're a programmer or not. And regardless of whether you want to do something with Decode or not, you should never refrain from learning how to program, because it is a skill that will prove undoubtedly useful. People have created all sorts of learning resources online, from places like Khan Academy to Code Academy, and even the Decode website itself. So this is a skill that you should probably invest in and give it a go because there's actually nothing to lose from actually just trying to learn something. And that's what I've been doing to help solve this problem.